Hey guys, it's Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls, and today I'm going to share with you all my January wrap up. I plan to do these monthly wrap-up videos a little differently than most booktubers. I plan to share with y'all, instead of what I read that month, I'm going to share with y'all what I reviewed that month. Here are the books I reviewed in January. One book I reviewed this month, like every last Friday of the month, I review a Mandy book. And this one was book number 22. I don't have a physical copy to show y'all, so here's the pretty cover. I love the Mandy covers. This was Mandy and the Angel's Secret by Lois Gladys Leopard. I think that's how you say the author's last name. I've always said it. Oh my word. I'm really, I, I hope I do the majority of these authors' name right, but there's some crazy last names, and I can, I can say that because I have a Z last name. I reviewed Mandy and The Angel Secret, and it was so cute. Not my favorite Mandy book, but it is still a classic, so I gave it three stars for my personal rating. Another preteen teen book I read what is with a name like Love by Tess Hillmore. Hilmo? Hilmo? I believe is how you say it, maybe? I'm not sure. This was really different. It's set in like the 50s and her last name is Love and it's really different. It had some parts, so it's not exactly for like the squeamish. But, and for that, I had to give it three and a half personal rating. But it was really different, and I love the cover. I think it's really cute. But then, when you remove it, I just think it's really pretty and simple. Like, I'm one for leaving the dust jackets on unless I'm reading the book. But I think it just looks really cute and pretty. The next book I read and reviewed in January was In Search of Livy Starling by Karen Ro Rossio... Ingerslev? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hope I got it semi-close. I'm sorry if I didn't though. I'm sorry. hope I was semi-close. This book, it was really cute. It was different. It wasn't what I was expecting, but it, was, it broke what I was expecting, so I think that's always a good thing. And it was set in the UK, so it was really fun and different in that way. And we don't see too many uh, UK set books unless they're Regencies. So to have a contemporary kind of teen book, it was different and fun and I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. Per Another book I read and reviewed come this new year was Mighty God Girls by Mandy Fender. The author actually contacted me to see if I would do an Amazon, not an Amazon review, but one of those like referral I just totally went blank on what they're called, but you know the things that's like somebody said this about this. It's like so I felt really fancy, y'all. I'm not gonna lie, but this is a preteen devotional. It was so cute. I know I'm obviously older than preteen, but I still really loved it. I gave it four star personal rating. But what's really neat is inside, and it's devotionals from A to Z, but then there's no places for notes, and I love that. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a big note taker. Like, I do a Bible journaling for a reason, but then, like, there's little doodles and things you can draw, and they're so cute. I really thought this was so fun and interactive and very, like, hands-on. I also reviewed a new teen devotional, and that was Bloom, Me and God by Samantha Haney. And I gave it three stars personal rating. I really liked that one as well. It was super cute. The cover is so fun and bright and cheerful and colorful. It was another really well done one. And I would think maybe that one would be for a bit older girls than the Mighty Gods girls. That one maybe. They could overlap though. I don't know. Are y'all like me where you stick with the same devotional? And like you just read it and read it and read it. I don't know. I, that's how I was raised. My mom has her Oz Oswara Chambers. I just messed up his name like too. What is it? me and names. I never can get names right. That's sad. I should be able to get names right. But so I've just been raised where you do the same devotional. So it's so neat though to be a reviewer and review a bunch of different devos because I'm like, oh I really enjoyed this style and I really liked how this author put this. So it's just been really cool in this blogging book review journey. Next book I read and reviewed, which was so intimidating because it's nearly 500 pages. It's so thick. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw my Instagram stories and I was up till like, I think it was five or four, or six, something around there. And I had to be up in a couple hours for church. I'm like, whoops. But it was The White Knight, The Lost Kingdom, and The Sea Princess by Judy Carson. Carlson. Carlson. It was, this was different. I personally gave it three stars. Fantasy is not my favorite genre, but it has a really good plot. And 
you, it's very much the good versus evil, and it's got very Narnia kind of feels, and I'm not necessarily a Narnia fan. I know, I know, I know, I know. It was really good, and I think those who really like the whole Narnia style would enjoy this one. Another book I read and reviewed in January was The Crowd by Alicia Botts. I'm awful with names. I feel bad. Craving a good YA, and I am so weak for the whole public school, boarding school type plots, which is hilarious because I was homeschooled. And it was just really different and really unique, and it broke quite a few of the typical stereotype kind of things that you would see, and like the cliques and the mean girls and the snotty girls, you know, those kind of storylines. And that's honestly the only way I can stand those storylines is if it's in like a school thing which is weird but I really like boarding school books I really enjoyed this one I'm so excited about a sequel it was this was really good I was really impressed another book I read was an inspiring nonfiction through the eyes of hope by Lacey Bu Bu Buchanan Buchanan is that how you say it I think that's how you say it but this was such an inspirational read I gave it four personal rating stars and I have followed this family for, I don't know, maybe two or three years, and to actually get to read this and learn their, their journey and their story, it's just been incredible, and it was, of course, very hopeful and very inspiring. I also reviewed the first five star, and okay, that never happens, like, I literally, I can't think of a time, maybe it happened a few years ago, but where the first month I read a five star book. I am so picky on five star books, y'all, but... Katie Waiting by Erin Mangum. I so, 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 so enjoyed this book. It was so good. I loved it. It was, it came at the perfect time. I needed to read it. Don't you love books like that? I love books like that. When that happens, it's like, thank you, Lord. That, that was such a you thing. This was so good. I so enjoyed it. I, I can't really do anything except fangirl over it. I hauled this one in my haul video a couple weeks ago. For, I got for Christmas, and I got to read it, and now I am eagerly like, okay, when can I, when do I have time to read book two, because I need to read it, and then book three is coming out here, and I cannot wait to pre-order that in paperback, because I'm a paperback girl, I love paperbacks, and honestly, all I can say, it's Erin Mangum, she's like one of my very favorite authors, like ever, so of course I'm going to love it, I've really loved this one, first five star of the year, I think that's exciting, I haven't read any one stars yet, yet. Like, you know it's gonna happen. But to have a five star before one star, that's that's cool, y'all. That, that rarely happens in my life. I also reviewed a Love Inspired Suspense, and this is this one is The Agent's Secret Pass by Debbie... Okay, Google Translate and I, we, we don't see eye to eye. So they say it's Giusti, and I wouldn't have pronounced it that way. But they're saying it's Italian, and it looks Italian. So maybe it is. So whatever. I did enjoy. So I did enjoy this one. It was good. It's an Amish suspense, and I love the whole law enforcement scene. I did a course in criminal justice because of all the suspense law enforcement books I read. So I've definitely that's a genre I really enjoy. Like normally that is what I want to read. Like I have so many suspense books I need to read. It's not funny. But I read this one. And I enjoyed this one. It got a bit um, gory and bloody for my taste. I'm not really into that. And so I had to give it two and a half star personal rating. The writing was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I do like seeing a bunch of different authors, though, with the love inspired suspense line. A historical mystery I read was A Lesson in Love and Murder by Rachel McMillan. I gave this one a personal rating of three stars. I enjoyed this one. The writing style is very different. It can be fun and like there's like little footnotes while you're reading them. So I think that's fun. It, I know that's not like a favorite of some people. On the first book it took me back a bit. But I've gotten more used to it. But I do have a hard time following along because it is such a different writing style. And that's definitely not the author's fault. That's, that's, that's my own brain. But I do enjoy the series. It's it's different. It's kind of like a Sherlock Holmes set in Toronto, but I enjoyed it. It was different. So yeah. And then it went
one and via video by me, by Dynamit, Jin Jan, the Santa Thompson, I'm just saying. So I read Love Finds You in Daisy, Oklahoma by Janice Hannah. Y'all, oh, it's so cute. Four and a half stars. Love this book. So cute. It's a keeper. I loved it. It had its witty moments and the children antics. You gotta love little boys. And it was just so cute. The author actually has uh, republished this as Daisy Bell and it's under Janice Thompson, so if you're interested in it, definitely check it out. I loved it. It was so cute. And I love books set in the early 1900s. Like, that is my time period. That is the time period I will, I would, I would probably go back to if I had to time travel. I think I'd go back to that time period. And I'm not just saying that because of the clothes. But I just, I really enjoy reading books in this time period. And I've enjoyed every book I've read by Janice Thompson. So... And then the last book would be The Innkeeper of Ivy Hill by Julie Classen. Her books are kind of um, a give or take for me. Sometimes they've got too much content I'm not a fan of, or otherwise they'll be pretty good. And this one was pretty good. I gave it four stars personal rating. I've been wanting to read a lot of more books that don't have a strong romance thread in them, and that's not something that's found too often in the Christian fiction market. This one was very, very light, and it was different. It's the first book in, I think, three books, so I'm looking forward to seeing how the rest of the series happens, but it's a Regency, and it was pretty good. So those were all the books I read and reviewed in January and February. I've got some also some great looking books coming up. I can't wait to read them and get started posting them. You can see the reviews of all these books and then the ratings for girls ages 9 to 19 on my blog booksforchristiangirls.blogspot.com and yeah let me know if you've read any of these. I'd love to hear your opinions or if there's any you're wanting to read like The Daisy Oklahoma or Katie and Waiting or Through the Eyes of Hope, or The Crowd. Let me know if there's any of these you're interested in. Those were my top picks for this month. I read quite a few good books this month, though, especially in the reviewing scheme. And, yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls. I post a new review on there every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I have a new video on this channel every Thursday. And, oh, I'm on Instagram every other day. Yeah. I'm busy! 